This video is for DeFi developers who want to swap tokens on KyberSwap with code. Sure, there's a UI, but if you want to build a trading bot, you'll need to interact with KyberSwap programmatically. In this video, I'll show you how to swap ETH for other tokens. I'm Blockman, and I help developers learn DeFi protocols fast. KyberSwap has some cool technology behind it, but my main focus for the last year has been Uniswap. My Uniswap Masterclass will take you from zero to hero, writing code to do trades and interact with liquidity. Link in the description. Now let's walk through some code. I have a hard hat project set up here, and what I'm doing is forking mainnet. I'll share the hardhat.config.js file in the description of this video. I also have only a couple packages installed, Ethers and Hardhat, and note that I'm using Ethers 5. If you're using Ethers 6, the code will be slightly different. We start by importing Ethers.js, which we'll use to interact with the blockchain. Now we import three different ABIs so that we can initialize these contracts. So we have the dynamic fee router for KyberSwap, and the ABI just contains all of the functions, the events, and how to interact with them. And then we have the ABI for ERC20 tokens, and then we have the ABI for wrapped ether, and we'll use these very shortly. Next, we have the addresses where these are deployed on mainnet for wrapped ether, for USDT, and for the dynamic fee router, one of the smart contracts that we can use to make swaps on KyberSwap. And I'm forking mainnet, so I initialize a provider here. Hardhat runs a fork of mainnet, and then we point our provider to that local hardhat node where it's running. Then we initialize a wallet, which is required to do write transactions to the blockchain like swaps. And this takes an argument which is the secret key for one of the addresses generated by hardhat. And you are given these secret keys when you start your local hardhat node. I'll show you that momentarily. So this generated wallet has ether in it. Well, fake ether that we can use to make swaps with this fork. After creating the wallet, we take that and we connect it to the provider. And that gives us our signer with which we can actually do swaps. Here we initialize the dynamic fee router, the contract that we'll use to do the swaps on KyberSwap. And then we also initialize USDT and wrapped ether. And we initialize these so that we can approve token transfers to actually do the swap on KyberSwap. Log balances is a function that logs the balance of ETH, wrapped ETH, and USDT in the wallet that we're using to do swaps. And we're going to run this before and after our swap. And if we see the balance of one token decrease and another token increase in the wallet, then we know that the swap successfully went through and tokens were swapped. Here are the pool addresses that trade wrapped Ether and USDT on KyberSwap for this one router. I did another KyberSwap tutorial showing how to programmatically get these with Kyber's factory contract. But for this, I'm just going to give you these. And we are just going to choose the first one and use it to do our swap. In our main function, we'll start by calling that function above to log the balances in our wallet. Then we'll set an amount that we want to pass into the swap. And this should be in way, so we'll use Ether's parse units to convert the one ETH into the equivalent amount of way. So basically just adding 18 zeros to it. But this value would be different if you were passing a different token into the swap, because a different token might have a different number of decimals. ETH just happens to have 18. Then before the swap, we approve a transfer of wrapped Ether to the router contract. Wrapped Ether is an ERC20 token, so it needs to be approved before it can be uh, used by another contract. We're going to approve that amount in that we set up here. And we're going to approve it for the dynamic fee router on KyberSwap. And that just gives that router contract the ability to access these tokens in our wallet and use it for a swap. And then we call wait so that the next transaction, the swap, doesn't run until this is complete. And in real life, you probably want to pre-approve the transfer in advance so that you're not waiting for it to complete and blocking your swap while the price continues to change, maybe to a price 
where you don't want to swap anymore. Now on the dynamic fee router, we're going to call swap exact ETH for tokens. First, we need to connect our signer because this is a write transaction which alters the state of a blockchain. So you need a signer for that. Then we call this function and we'll pass in a few arguments. We pass in the minimum amount out. We pass in the pool address in an array. This is the pool path. And then we pass in the two token addresses in an array. So we want to swap from wrapped ether to USDT. So we put wrapped ether first and USDT second. And this is the token path. Then we pass the sender's address. So that is the user's wallet address. And then we pass in a deadline in Unix time. The number of seconds after January 1st, 1970 that we want to set for a deadline. So this basically just takes the time now in seconds and then it adds 10 minutes to that. So if this swap doesn't get picked up in 10 minutes, then it won't transact at all. And lastly, and this is important, we want to pass in a value. And this is the amount of ETH that we want to send to the swap. So I take back actually what we did up here. You shouldn't need to approve it all because we are actually sending ether. We are going to swap from ETH to USDT rather than wrapped ether to USDT. And for ETH, you don't need to do an approve because ETH is not an ERC20 token and it works a little bit differently. Even if we want to swap ETH to USDT, we should still set the input address as wrapped ether. The ETH is automatically wrapped into wrapped ether and then it goes through the swap. Then we'll wait for the transaction to complete and we'll log our balances again to see if they change. Now let's start our local hardhat node and we can start this with npx hardhat node. And if you scroll to the very top, this is the local address where the node is running and where I'm pointing my provider. And this is the private key that I'm using for my wallet, which is associated with the first generated account by Hardhat. Then in another window, let's run this script. These are the balances before, and you can see that we have 10,000 Ether and zero wrapped Ether in USDT. And then after the swap, we have a little bit less Ether. We still have zero wrapped Ether, and we have some USDT. So the swap went through. Not necessarily at a great price, and that's possibly because there just isn't much liquidity in this pool, but you now know how to swap ETH for tokens on KyberSwap. Leave your questions and tutorial requests in the comments, like and subscribe if you're still watching, and I'll see you next time.